Right now, we're about to check out Hex Shards of Fate, courtesy of our friend Corey. Corey, thank you so much for joining us on stage. Nice to see you. All right, so Corey, for anybody who hasn't heard of Hex Shards of Fate, what's a quick way to describe it? Uh, you know, Hex Shards of Fate is the first ever uh, high fantasy dancing and karaoke game. Okay. We've right. kind of taken a left turn with it. I know it's a this big announcement that, to a lot of my fans out there. That was a real immediate detour into yeah. crazy well, town. Well, you know, sometimes you got to find new ground. Okay. No, actually, we, uh, we've, we're sticking with the first ever uh, MMO TCG. Okay. MMO TCG. So, for the uninitiated, trading card game. Yes, that is okay. correct. All right. Massively multiplayer online and TCG trading card game. All right, so I believe we've got some footage of the game that we're going to check out here, but what inspired this merger of seemingly different genres? You know, uh, I've been in the, uh, in the video game industry for about 20 years, and I've been a hardcore TCG player for about that long as well. And uh, one of the things that I ran into was this sort of crossover between those two genres in terms of the places that I've worked. I've worked at, you know, Blizzard, and Upper Deck, and... Uh, one of the things that MMOs do very well is bring a lot of people together. Mm -hmm. And it, it gives them a common goal, it gives them the opportunity to interface with each other in things like guilds. And uh, one of the things that I noticed in TCGs was that uh, you also have the opportunity to get a bunch of people together and it's so important. So I really felt like an MMO TCG would give you all the benefits of an MMO, MMO and all the benefits of a TCG and it can be just this great thing. All right, cool. So now that we've got right the Right now we're seeing, here, uh, that's Kismet, our primal of luck. And this is our pack opening experience. So you can see they dragged a the pack in there, and now you got your 15 cards that have now shown up. And uh, when they flip over, the top row is all the commons, the bottom, middle row is the uncommons, and finally you've got your rare, or sometimes legendary. You click on that, and you get to see what you, uh, what you popped out of your pack. Our packs are an incredible value. They're, they're two bucks for 15 cards, which in the, in the digital trading card uh, industry is unheard of. And then also, I tried to pack as much stuff as possible into there. You also get a chest. So as you okay. open a pack, you actually get a little chest, and the chests are all different levels of rarity. And uh, <coughs> the, 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 the chest is packed with uh, different things from the PvE side of the game. So equipment, other cards. Also, uh, you have the chance to uh, uh, spin the wheels of fate. And the wheels of fate are what you're going to see in one second here. And uh, what you have is gold in the game that you earn, and then you have platinum that you buy. So the gold, uh, you're actually able to use it for stuff like you're seeing here, which is spinning the wheels of fate and uh, potentially winning prizes. So they won some extra gold from, uh, from the Wheels of Fate. And uh, you can continue potentially to spin the wheels if it allows you, that's one of the prizes. And you can win more packs of cards. You can win alternative art cards and sleeves. Basically, I just tried to pack as much goodness into uh, each individual booster as I could. I felt like, uh, you know, I, I can't give you the experience of popping open a pack physically. I can't, the crinkle, Right. of the, the foil, the smell of those new cards. I can't give you that. <laughs> right. What I can do is give you all the bells and whistles that a video game has, and that means some really cool visuals and uh, lots of fun little stuff to collect. Oh. One of the other things you noticed, so they just got an upgrade to their chest. They went from uncommon to a, or a rare. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that the, uh, the Wheels of Fate does. It actually uh, it, it makes your chest even better. One of the things you saw in there, too, was the gold pack. That's a primal pack. Okay. And occasionally, when you're buying packs, you'll randomly get a, a primal pack. The primal pack actually has 15 cards, all of them rare or legendary. And so you can imagine how exciting that is. You get this pack. It's like every card in here is a rare or legendary. Right, yeah. So that's, uh, that's awesome. And uh, we have a full-fledged auction house coming into the game in about a couple weeks. So taking that pack and going to the auction house and seeing what you get for it, it's an opportunity to really uh, juice up your collection get some uh, more platinum potentially and uh, buy more packs or enter tournaments. Mm -hmm. So we're actually <laughs> taking a look at the auction house here. Can you go into the nuts and bolts of, of how this works? Yes, this is a full-fledged auction house. You can buy and sell just about anything in the game. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to use gold and platinum as currencies inside of the auction house. Uh, we tried to make it as rich and feature uh, complete as possible. You're able to, to post items, go back in, set buy it now prices. Uh, it's really just about everything you would expect from a full featured auction house. And you talk about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of games out there and uh, they're based on collectibles. And one of the important things about a collectibles game is I have to have the ability to give something to someone else or get something from someone else. Right. That's the in nature of collectability. <laughs> like, without the ability to show someone what I have and then trade with them, what's the point? Right. And so the auction house is critical. And you've had a lot of games talk about, we're going to have an auction house, we're going to have direct trading. 
and they don't do it. And I'll tell you why. It's really, really hard. It's a tough thing like, to, we're, to we're get a, right. We're a tiny little developer, uh -huh. and uh, you know we're we're way out of our depths in some ways. And we've been hiring lots of great engineers and really ramping up and and doing a good job. But having an auction house is so hard. I can't even tell you. And so we're finally there. We've done so much testing and we've done so much work to make this thing robust and perfect. And I, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, we've had, we've had the game running in the closed beta for a while. Mm -hmm. We've been putting in more features. We've been polishing the hell out of the features we have and people are loving it. Uh, but you know, one of the things that people have really requested was that auction house and I'm finally going to have it in the game. What you're seeing here is uh, some actual gameplay. And as you can see, uh, the game is uh, beautiful. Uh, you know, I, I think we're the best looking digital TCG there is. Mm -hmm. uh, at least full, full fledged real TCG. We're, we're the best looking there is. And it's uh, only going to get better from here. As I said, we're still in our, in our beta. So in terms of the mechanics of the game itself, how does this compare to other TCGs that people might have played in the past? Uh, th what's great about Hex is that uh, it, it, my goal from day one was to innovate. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say innovate, I mean take what an MMO can do, yeah. take what a digital-only card game can do, and really elevate the genre. And so when we talk about things like socketed cards, cards that have a double back where you flip it twice and you get to have achievements for each individual card that make an extended art or, turn, or a leveling system that turns your cards to foil, when you talk about socketed cards that let you plug gems into them and fundamentally change what they do, I mean, the list goes on and on. The mechanics, the interactions, the things that we can do in terms of transforming, shuffling cards into their deck, it gives us so much room to innovate, it's ridiculous. And when you marry all that to the single player experience, the guilds, the PvP teams, all the stuff that you get from an MMO, uh, you know, you really end up with an experience that is unlike anything anyone has ever played. And, and you know, I hear people talk about parts of the game they're seeing now and they're excited, right. but in my mind I know their head is going to explode. And, and again, the people on our forums right now are getting mad at me probably because uh -huh. they want all this stuff and I keep saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But once it gets here, people's heads are going to explode because you've never played a game like this. We will be the biggest DTCG in the world. I'm positive of that. That's a bold claim. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, check with me next year at this time. <laughs> I guarantee it. This is what's going to happen. This uh -huh. game is the future of DTCGs. So you mentioned that you're in closed beta right now. What does the roadmap consist of? Where are you guys at at the moment? Where do you want to be before it's a, f a full official launch? So we're in the closed beta right now. That launched, you know, we had that Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. We had the, like, I think we're in the top 10, maybe the fifth or sixth ever biggest, you know, uh, video game Kickstarter of all time, two and a half million dollars raised. Pretty good. And, uh, you know, what happened when, okay, so that Kickstarter happened, mm -hmm. and I, I always say, like, you know, the money was great, but even more important was the community that came out of that. Yeah. I mean, I have actual real life friends now from people who jumped into that Kickstarter. You know, one of them, Colin, was going to be here today to, like, come and walk around the show with me. Like, it's, it's had a huge impact on my actual life, meeting real people. Mm -hmm. And that support really proved to me that there was a need for this game. Was this game just some goofball idea of mine? Or was this something people really wanted to play? And, and the Kickstarter really told me yes. Mm -hmm. And so the next phase of that is, do you want to play this? Yes. Now, having people have a chance to actually play it, do you like it, is the next big question. And I got to tell you, uh, we started our closed beta on 422. It's been about six weeks. We've got about 15,000 people in. We have about two or 3,000 a day logging in and playing. In that time, that six weeks, uh, over 600,000 packs of cards have been opened. Over 300,000 games have been played. And over 5,000 tournaments have fired off. So to me, that's sort of like, is this a good idea? And then the next phase, is this actually fun? Uh -huh. I feel like I've answered both of those questions. Uh -huh. And now that next phase, which I'm hoping is in the very near future, it goes to open beta. We have some things we want to do. We want a robust tutorial. We want a few more features in. Then we want to go to that open beta. And I feel like once we get to that point and everyone has a chance to jump in, I mean, there are tens of millions of people that love TCGs. Once they get a chance to see what we've created, they're going to go crazy. And that's why I say it's going to be the biggest DTCG in the world. And we've only got about another minute or two left here, but just the, the process of going through Kickstarter, like, you know, obviously that lends a lot of transparency to the whole thing because, you know, backers, they signed up for, for the whole ride. What's that been like for you guys? Uh, surreal. Yeah. I talk about it a lot, but having a connection where the people that are part of our Kickstarter are part of our family now. Mm -hmm. They aren't people that just play our game. Yeah. I'm beholden to them <laughs> to deliver the best 
possible gaming experience I can, and the one they signed up for on Kickstarter. I owe those people, right. and that level of responsibility falling on me uh, is something I take very, very seriously. I get on our message boards, I read everything, I interact with our people all the time, I love our community, uh, but it is a lot of pressure, and it's something that I you know, want to make sure everyone feels very good about. We offered refunds, mm -hmm. like no Kickstarter offers, for, for, for months, for like, I don't know, seven months, we offered refunds. So anyone who felt like they, this wasn't what they wanted, right. I gave them back all their money because I only wanted people who believed in the dream of what we were trying to accomplish to be part of our community. And that's the secret to all of this. We all serve a higher purpose, and that purpose is to make this game exist. And so it's been a remarkable uh, journey. And as we finally are getting to the place where people can, can buy packs and play the game and see where we're heading and start to get some of these real features, it's made a huge difference in terms of uh, you know, my confidence level, which has always been high, but actually seeing it has been wonderful. Now, in its current state, is it backer only? Or are you inviting more players who weren't well, right on board Right now, you can, you can go to HexTCG.com. HexTCG.com has everything you would ever want to know about Hex. It has our message boards and our forums filled with actually very cool people. Okay. And uh, I mean, I have people in the industry ask me, how, why are your message boards, everyone's so nice and friendly? I say it's because everyone there gets it and they right. believe in this. But you can go there and chat with people. Uh, you can sign up for the beta. And I said, very soon, we're going to be going to open beta. We'll be sending out more keys. We've been giving out keys slowly. Most of the people on the, in the Kickstarter are in the game now, and so that's the, the, the best way to uh, really interface with the game. All right, cool. And um, I, you might have mentioned this already, but any sort of timeline for when you're, you know, you're looking, looking to put the 1.0 stamp on it? Uh, no. I, yeah. We have some big features coming up in a couple weeks, auction house, large scale tournaments. Uh, you know, we got this other little system for new players, so some, some more fun stuff to do. Uh, shortly after that, we're going to be getting those tutorials in. We're going to be getting the open beta. And then uh, pretty shortly after that, we have our first big chunk of PvE coming out. And so it's kind of a rolling launch. And i got to tell you, I have, you know, I've talked about this at length. I've got uh, features to last probably three years. I'm going to continue to reinvent what a digital TCG is. Sure. I mean, you go to our dungeons, you're not always playing a TCG. Some of them feel like you're playing a board game with TCG cards. It's going to be a really remarkable experience, and I'm going to continue to grow that. All right, cool. Well, Corey, thank you so much for giving us a little look at Hex Shards of Fate. My pleasure. All right. Like I said, HexTCG.com. I hope everyone can, can check the game out and sign up. I'd love everyone to give it a chance. All right, cool. That, so that was it. That was your look at uh, Hex Shards of Fate. And we are going to be running to a quick break right now, but we'll be coming back with even more awesome demos and interviews, so stay tuned.